Hi and welcome to another Tabless Glass Emporium YouTube video. Uh, today we're looking at this. It's a kind of floral 3D heart made with lots of, I'm um, showing you how to do freeze and fuse and using lots of um, candy mix to make this fantastic kind of floral garden heart. Um, it's sending you guys a bit of love just before we go off on a little holiday break uh, and giving you another fantastic idea for Valentine's Day. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make this. So the first thing we need to do is look at the freeze and fuse. Now there's amazing resources out there on how to do freeze and fuse. Lots of people have already done really great videos. There's also a freeze and fuse Facebook group. Um, Rosie Glass runs that and it's great and she has lots of great advice as does other people. So check those out. But this is a kind of a little introduction into it. So freeze and fuse uses silicone molds um, like this that are normally used in baking and you fill it with glass and water tap it to make sure that the glass goes into the mould, freeze it, un, un, um, get it out of the mould onto a kiln shelf and then it goes into the kiln to be fired and then you can use those pieces in projects. Um, so that's just a general principle, There's, as I say lots of other people out there showing how to do this so excuse me if my method isn't as um, good as others but you know this is how I do it. Guys wear a mask, you're using powders, um, uh, so when you're doing it, please put a mask on. I'm not going to, because you won't be able to hear me, not with all the other noise on. I'm, um, so I'm just gonna be careful how I'm doing it. So I'm using a little bit of, this is a fuchsia fine for it, very expensive, but I just want to use a tiny bit of texture for it in the middle. Um, I'm then, because I sort of wanted to be graded this one from the middle to, to the outside. So then I'm using some gold purple right in the middle. And I'm doing this with just powder for the moment. Um, and then I'm going to use some fuchsia transparent. Wow, I'm extravagant today in my glass choices. Um, which I'm going a little bit further out with. And then I'm going to fill it with um, neo lavender. Now, being careful, I'm going to try not to put any dust in the air myself because I don't want to breathe in the dust, but just. I'm going to be adding water pretty quickly. Now, lots of people, some people add the, the glass dry to their moulds and then add water. I like kind of making a slurry um, and adding it. As you can kind of see in my glass, if I tap on it, all the water goes to the top and the glass sinks to the bottom and that's the principle is that you want to get the water to rise to the top but the water helps the glass move into the different areas of the mould to get the mould filled. You also want to be careful of air bubbles and now what we use is a very fun tool, it's a cheap vibrator. Um, doing workshops with these is always fun um, and you literally just use the vibrator along the side of the mould and under the mould to help agitate it, help bubbles come up and help get the glass into the tricky bits of the mould. So then I can keep filling the mould up a little bit at a time, using the vibrator on it in between. I've got quite a lot of water in there, so I'm now just going to add a bit of dry glass on top. Still pretty wet now. Now, when you're getting towards the top of the mold and it's still pretty wet, you just want to use some um, household tissue or toilet roll just to soak up some of the excess water. Then you can vibrate it. If you've got an old toothbrush, electric toothbrush, that, that's an also a good way of doing it. If you don't want to splash out on a cheap vibrator. <laughs> Who doesn't want to splash out on the cheap by later? It's Christmas after all. And it gives smiles all round and lots of laughter. Let me bring the vibrators out to do a bit of freeze and fuse at the studio. So you can see that's pretty full now. I'm just going to quickly give it a once over at the bottom just to make sure it's really gone into all the nooks and crannies at the bottom. 
And now it can go into the freezer and we'll freeze it for about half an hour or so until it's fully frozen and then it can go on a kiln shelf. And we'll show you how this one is and all the other ones we've made when we get them out of the freezer. So here are these out of, um, I think they've been in the freezer long enough. Now to get them out, you just need to really delicately um, sort of bend the mould, pop them out. And as you can see, they come out and they've got the beautiful details all on them. Um, you want to handle them as little as possible because obviously they're frozen and the more we warm them up, um, the more likely they'll break. Uh, so to get them on the kiln paper like so. Oh, my big fingers, it's harder. I made some purple ones and I have a duplicate of that mould and I made some kind of purpley coloured ones. Now some people then dry them. Um, I haven't quite managed to get to the bottom. Some I had someone because moisture is bad for your kiln. That's true. Um, other people put them straight in. Um, I'm going to get the rest out. You can see they're already going a bit wet because they're melting because we're in quite warm sunshine um, coming through our window here. Um, so I'm going to get the rest out. I'm going to just put them straight on. Um, the firing schedule will be at the end, but it's uh, going quick, quick, quick up to the top temperature for a very short time and then off because. They're very small, they don't really need to be annealed, and most this will all be going back in again to far on the main, main project. So this is a big one I did. Um, I'm hoping it's all nicely used, and there it is, beautifully come out. Um, it's got quite a lot of moisture in that one. I'm a little bit worried it's got too much, but we will see how it is once it goes in the kiln. I might vent my kiln, because that one has got a bit of moisturiser in it. In it. Moisturiser? Moisture. Oh, there we go. Look how pretty that one is. I mean, freezing cheese is great, guys. I haven't done it in ages, and I kind of forget how much I love it until I give it another go and think, oh my God, how, how pretty. Look at what you can get. I mean, really delicate stuff I've never got on with. I think it kind of falls apart. And if you have really delicate stuff, it will pull apart. And so it's kind of harder to get the mould, to the things to work, because they tend, there tends not to be enough glass in them, and they, they pull apart. But kind of beautiful things like this work really well. So the other idea I had was to take some of our wafers. Now these are just some mixed wafers we had sitting around. Um, and then I want to try and kind of drape them over a mould to get them um, kind of relaxed and almost like into a flower shape. So I'm, I have just um, uh, took this as sort of a vermiculite board that I'm literally like, you have to be a bit careful with this because this has probably been fired and um, the dust's not great, but it's wet, so I'm pretty sure it's okay. Then I'm just sort of pulling the ends off so it's got kind of an easy area to slump around it. But if you don't have vermiculite or something else, you can just use um, uh, chalk. So just a piece of chalk, put it over the top. It's gonna have to be on quite a high drape to get this to drape because the glass is very light. And as I got to say, got a high cry, cry factor. The likelihood of this falling off the piece of thing it's pretty high but we're going to put five in see if we get any out um i also am going to put in on a full fuse i've got before i do this i'm going to put some stamen little baby stamen in full fuse those and that slump those as well um so i've cut a couple of hearts um out of glass and i just want to do some mica stamping on them to go on the project so i really love this area on the stamp it's also kind of easy to use a stamp that's bigger than the piece so you know you're going to get some pattern all over it. So I'm going to go like this. It's probably good to try and make sure you get the smooth side of the glass. I've got to say, I've not made sure I've got the smooth side of the glass. Then I'm going to just take some, actually silver mica for this one. Let's put it on. So guys, you should be wearing dust masks if you're doing this. I just can't because you won't better hear me. And there is that one, really pretty. So for the second one, I'm just going to use a different area of this stamp. Push it down. It's 
for burnishing, as I've been told. That's what um, printmakers do. And then I really could do with a better paintbrush. Put it on and then wipe the excess off. And it just looks so kind of gorgeous afterwards. So those two will go in the film on a tack fuse. The mic will stick to the, the glass and then they can be used in the main project. So here are these all fired. As you can see, they keep their shape really well. The smaller pieces even stay together, which sometimes doesn't happen. But they look really good. I'm now gonna put a mask on and take them out of the kiln. So for the rest of the project, I've cut a piece of glass, a white glass that will fit my frame. Um, I often use these, they're just literally from the hardware store, little wooden things, I don't know what they're designed for, but I use them like this so that I can raise my glass up and then when I'm picking it up afterwards, it's easier. Um, so that's a useful tip. I'm sure I've shared it before, but sometimes it's useful sharing again. I've got the tray here full of all the freeze and fuse. I've just given them a wash to get the fibre paper off the back. They're quite rough, the back, so it's quite hard getting the fibre paper off. Um, but I'm going to kind of... So now I just want to compose the piece. I've got... I d also got the wafers that I draped with some, um, some full fuse stamen in the middle. They didn't quite come out how I was hoping. But I think they're still quite fun and pretty, and they're going to add a sort of textural element to this piece. Um, I obviously need to go a lot hotter uh, with these... Um, Ones that statement really didn't um, didn't go down at all. So anyway, um, I would, did it over the weekend when I wasn't here to sort of check on it. Normally, if you're draping things, I find it's best to be there and at top temperature have a look and go, is it doing anything? And if it hadn't been, I would have upped the temperature and upped the temperature until it draped how I wanted it to. Um, but I just literally put the kiln on and left because I had our Christmas party. Um, anyway, weird. We're doing Valentine's Christmas parties. It's all a bit odd. Um, so I've got a collection of things here to decorate it with. I've got the freeze and fuse stuff we have. I've got these couple of wafers. I've got the hearts that we did the um, mica on. And then I've got some of our flame work flowers, some marini, some leaves and some other leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and just start decorating this all up and we can see how I get on. Picnic with my best So here it is ready to go in the kiln. Um, you can see we've got some flamework um, petals here. We've um, added stamen and um, fibre paper to keep those in place. You can see how to do that on one of the other videos showing our flameworks um, things. Mostly, we've, I would say proportionally, a lot of this is the um, freeze and fuse flowers. Then we've got a lot of um, candy mix on here, which is just such a great way of um, doing this with kind of um, using stuff that's really good, good value. Um, and then, yeah, we've got the, um, just a few bits of Marini as well, but mostly it was, mostly, mostly it was, it was the candy mix. So um, this will go in the kiln. Guys, it's really lots and lots of layers and lots of different thicknesses. So this will be a very long anneal. I'm probably gonna do six hours on this. Um, so we'll get it in now and hopefully get it back out sometime tomorrow to see how it looks. So here it is out of the kiln. I'm glad I did the really long anneal. It definitely needed it because there's so many layers. Um, and I'm really thrilled how it came out. I was a bit um, ambivalent about how it would look in the end, but I think it looks exactly how I imagined it would. And I'm so pleased with the sort of texture and feel of it. It's got such a lovely three dimensional, particularly with this heart piece in and the other freeze and fuse items mixed with the marini and you know a lot of the uh, candy mix scrap works really well together in this piece. So I have a box frame and this is an Ikea box frame it's got perspex at the front. I'm going to have the perspex in because this piece has got kind of lots of nooks and crannies on it and for dust 
it's going to be much better for whoever ends up with it to have protection at the front so the inside doesn't get dusty and then slot the piece in like this I'm just going to move it back so you can see it properly um, it's quite nice because I'm not actually going to put there is the cardboard that you can put at the back but you don't really need it because it's quite a, um, a nice thick box and with that you can get sort of some light coming through the back as well which gives the piece a bit more kind of translucent than it would be if it had the kind of solid back. You can't actually see it from over from this angle, but um, so this will go, you know, that's that's the piece finished. Um, and um, I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please subscribe and turn on notifications. I can't wait to see what you guys do this with this. I hope everyone has a wonderful festive season and best, best wishes for, for 2022 from everyone here at Tabitha's Glass Emporium. Maybe I'll get a place that's right across the Notre Dame. The roof will be leaking, but I'll be as happy as they come. Well, I read that the French always.